So this this new analysis that we're gonna uh, present at Arvo is uh, part of a broad effort to understand, again, vision threatening retinal diseases, better understand diabetic macular edema, as well as other exudative macular diseases. In this particular study we're presenting at Arvo, that is an exploratory analysis of our phase three pivotal trials in diabetic macular edema, Yosemite and Ryan. And in a nutshell, what we did is we ran a sequence of experiments by exploring can machine learning models predict at baseline what's going to be the treatment functional outcomes of patients with DME that were treated with vabismol. That was the overarching scientific question. So we assessed uh, clinical features at baseline. And in a moment, I'm going to describe a little bit how we investigated the features themselves. But we used only clinical features at baseline. And we tested different modeling approaches, all machine learning um, modeling approaches to predict visual treatment response at one month, six months or 24 weeks, and then at one year. Uh, the one month time point was after one vabismol injection. The 24 weeks time point was after um, the loading phase of six monthly injections. And then the one year time point was the primary outcome of the clinical trial. And we ran a sequence of experiments by trying different modeling approaches and also by feeding the models with different baseline features. So we started with very simple baseline features. We started with best corrected visual acuity, which was the predicted outcome that we were investigating. Then we tried different feature sets for example, just demographic characteristics, age, gender, um, treatment history, and um, basic lab results, for example, um, HbA1c or um, some baseline basic imaging features. So diabetic retinopathy, severity scale score, or central subfield um, retinal thickness. And then we tried another sequence of experiments making the feature set more and more complex. So then we added um, additional imaging biomarkers that were extracted by another um, artificial intelligence-based model, and then a very comprehensive uh, feature set at baseline that included different imaging biomarkers, including fluid volume and new, new biomarker assessments that we and the field have been exploring. So we changed those uh, feature sets at baseline, and then we changed the different modeling approaches, and we checked the, the different performance metrics in the time points that I mentioned. So what we learn is that with some specific modeling approaches and with different baseline feature sets, some models were actually capable of predicting visual function treatment response uh, relatively well. And we're uh, very pleased with, with some of those uh, potential performance metrics. What we notice with the sequence of experiments is that prediction of best corrected visual acuity at one month was, was very good in some models and also at six months or 24 weeks. Um, the performance prediction we obtained at one year was not so favorable. Um, and we're looking to that with further experiments. But the, in summary, some of our models were able to predict at baseline what's gonna be the visual function response at one month and six months with potential promising accuracy. Um, I think the relevance for clinicians like myself is we know that um, visual function prediction is a challenge clinically. 
In other words, when I have a patient sitting in front of me at the clinic or a patient enrolling in a clinical trial, based on solely clinical considerations, it's very difficult to predict what's going to be the vision over time with or without treatment. But adding treatment could even um, elevate the, the challenge to make such a prediction at baseline. So we're very um, excited about seeing that some models were able to make such a prediction. Um, and again, one month and six months had the better had the better performance so far. So as a clinician, I'm excited to use such technologies to help us um, better inform the patient on their treatment options, better help us to make also educated and uh, highly informed treatment decisions. As a drug developer, I'm super excited about this potential because again, baseline characteristics is an important aspect of clinical trial design and clinical trial execution. And having such technologies to help us design better clinical trials that give patients better chances of a positive outcome throughout the trial, this is this is super, super exciting to you. I could talk all day about this because uh, th this effort is actually part of a of a a, a broader effort um, that that our team has been conducting in developing in house proprietary algorithms to help us mine our imaging and clinical data sets. So, in a nutshell, we want to better understand vision threatening retinal diseases, better understand disease characteristics, patient characteristics, and translate that accelerated data-driven knowledge to our clinical trial design. So um, from the technological perspective, what we've been thinking about next steps, for example, we can continue to explore the baseline features. We can look at the results of this particular project and understand how better can we mine or interpret clinical results at baseline. And that could be again lab results, but it could be mostly imaging analysis at baseline. From the modeling perspective, and I'm a clinician, I'm no data science expert, but we will continue to work on very fast evolving field of AI and machine learning. And, our group um, is in the forefront of developing new modeling approaches and will continue to, to evolve our, our efforts in the modeling themselves. Um, and again, because this project is part of a, of, a, of a broader effort, we have different data sets coming from different clinical trials. So we can also increase our pool of data to help us improve the modeling performance simply by having more data to train the models. So lots, lots to do in um, near, near midterm future. You know, super excited. And, and I must say, I constantly balance my excitement with 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 some words of caution as well. It's a very new technology. There's a lot we don't know about it. So um, in any endeavor that implements AI-based approaches, we must be absolutely sure that we understand how the model was developed, we understand the performance, we understand the output, um, there is transparency every step of the way. We understand the data that we are applying the model on. This is all to say, I don't foresee a future that artificial intelligence will remove the expert from the decision-making process. Very much on the contrary, as I said before, I think AI has the potential to empower experts to make even more informed decisions. But for that to happen, it needs to be implemented in a responsible way. It needs to be implemented in a transparent, trustworthy um, context. As like any new technology, AI is 
is just quote unquote just a new a new technology. Now, what's about to come? I'm I'm gonna again split between my two hats as a clinician, but also as a as a clinical scientist, a drug developer. As a clinician, um, it's gonna take a little bit longer, I think, for AI based technologies to be fully available. But we are seeing some very good progress, and ophthalmology is truly leading the way across healthcare in the utilization of AI-powered solutions for the use at the point of care. And I see immediately improving when when time comes, when it becomes available, I can see improving data flow, improving patient flow, um, increasing the confidence in, in the healthcare provider's decision about patient management. And um, also I can see improving the communication between healthcare providers and patients because it's all in there. It's a it's a very powerful technology to condensate and help us analyze complex data. And with that, I hope improves transparency also for the patients, patient education and, and, and patient, um, we want patients to own their treatment decisions and fully understand what's how how their um, healthcare decisions have been managed. As a drug developer, we must do this. If you look at broadly how drug development um, has been conducted historically, we know it takes Connor more than a decade to take one compound from bench to bedside, more than a decade, and the the amount of investment, it's it, it's a bill that healthcare system at large is being paid. And when you look at public numbers, you can see it can take anywhere from 1.5 to 2.5 billion dollars to develop one compound. And again, those are public numbers and the sources vary so much, but it's a problem that we all, drug developers or not, we all face because we're all patients or or healthcare providers or caregivers. The healthcare system needs better drug development. And when you translate to ophthalmology, one decade means a whole generation of patients will go blind before we even learn if the compounds in early stage development will work or not. And when you look at public data about the success rates in drug development. Again, the numbers vary per source, but it's in the single digits, meaning for all compounds in early stage development now, less than 10% is going to be available for patients and physicians in a decade from now. So drug development needs to evolve and, and AI has so much potential to, to streamline, increase the chances of success, accelerate and, and reduce costs. I think final reason why I'm so excited about this is because in ophthalmology and specifically in retina, and I'm biased, that's my field, that's my world, but it's a very special niche for AI because in ophthalmology and in retina, our clinical decisions are based on digital data at scale. So when I when I have a patient in front of me at the office or when I design a clinical trial and I ask myself, what's the patient that's gonna be benefit the most from such a treatment or from enrolling in a, such a clinical trial? All those clinical decisions, they are based on retinal imaging. And it's not the same for all areas of medicine. But ophthalmology, and again, retina, because the clinical decisions are anchored on digital data at scale, it's just a very special niche for, for AI. So lots of progress have been made in AI in general in healthcare, and that's one of the reasons why ophthalmology is, is leading the way.